Okay, well, the next um, set of biological macromolecules we're going to look at are nucleic acids. So we're just going to look at their structure, and then we're going to relate it to um, the structure to its function again, and also to the stability, because we have DNA and RNA, and each are less or more stable, and we'll look at some of the reasons why that happens. Um, so first, we need to just look at the structural monomer, which is called a nucleotide, and I've drawn a little schematic here. So in a nucleotide, what you have is you have this backbone made up of a sugar unit, a ribose sugar, so five carbon sugar. So there's a carbon in each of these corners here, and there's an oxygen at the top. And the backbone also includes um, these phosphate groups. These fo two of these phosphate groups come off to give the energy of forming um, backbone bonds and you get long chains of alternating sugar phosphate, sugar phosphate groups and that's called the sugar phosphate backbone of these nucleic acids. Um, also hanging off is the more important part which is the new nitrogenous base which is here. So this nitrogenous base is what actually carries out the function of nucleotides um, and nucleic acids in encoding information within a cell. And we'll look at the different um, nitrogenous bases that can be attached to nucleotides and how they um, actually carry out their role and how their structure helps them do that. So as I mentioned, we have two different um, nucleic acids. We have DNA and we have RNA. So they're essentially the same. They're um, DNA stands for deoxyribose nucleic acid and RNA stands for ribose nucleic acid and um, the DNA where it says deoxy it simply means on this carbon here usually um, in ribose there is an OH group here and so there's an OH group here so there's two OH groups bonded to the um, this, um, this is called the two, say, two, number two carbon and the number three carbon. So usually each of them has an um, hydroxyl group bonded to them and a hydrogen like this. Um, in DNA, however, as we can see here, I've just drawn the two, the two carbon. So that there's the two carbon, that carbon I've drawn right there. In DNA, um, the two carbon doesn't have this hydroxyl group. It has, it's bonded to two hydrogens. Whereas in RNA, it's ribose, um, normal ribose, so they both have hydroxy groups. Um, so DNA is just missing this oxygen here in the OH group. And so the two car the um, number two carbon just has two H's bond to it, whereas RNA has H and OH. And that actually um, I'll show how show you how that happens later, but it actually accounts a lot for um, the stability of these molecules. That's pretty much why DNA is very stable and RNA is much, much less stable. So anyways, we, so we have our nucleotide, it has a pentose sugar, a triphosphate group, and together they form the backbone, and we have our nitrogenous base hanging off the side, which can be one of several examples, and we'll get into that. Um, so long chains of these nucleic acids, uh, long, um, long chains of nucleotides are called nucleic acids, and they're formed by the creation of um, phosphodiester bonds. So we'll look at how a phosphodiester bond is created. So here we have two, um, two nucleotides. So here's the sugar on one and its base here. And then we have a phosphate group in between and then the next sugar here and that sugar's base. And that goes on in a chain and goes on down here. It's continuing. So I'm just showing two um, nucleotides in a repeating um, see, um um, structure of the nucleic acid and um, we can see here this phosphate group if we look at the page before um, that's the phosphate group belonging to this sugar here I'll move it out um, so this phosphate group once belonged to this sugar and was once that phosphate there and when the when this um, nucleotide was added onto the chain these two um, phosphates here were cleaved off so they were cleaved off and um, that released energy because um, in a very similar way to ATP releasing energy, we'll show that a bit later, but because they are all negatively charged and put close together, there's an um, energy bonus to um, removing them and cleaving them. So the energy used by um, cleaving these off is used to create this um, ester bond up here 
and um, this bond here is an ester because it's got a double bond oxygen to an um, group bonded to an oxygen bonded to a carbon um, and this is um, pretty much a mirror image it's exactly the same thing so these are both ester bonds in um, outlined in red here and here and so this is called a phosphodiester bond so phospho because of the phosphorus in the middle and diester because there are two esters there's an ester on each of either side so it's called a phosphodiester bond and the energy comes from cleavage of these two phosphates so the um, creation of phosphodiester bonds between these two um, nucleotides bonds the two nucleotides together and um, is what um, makes up the long ch chain of the nucleic acid um, what happens then is um, when you have a long um, chain nucleic acids like a hundred or two hundred nucleotides long what they can do um, they what's called um, compatible and they um, the two independent chains bond non-covalently so they use hydrogen bonding um, and they um, form this double helix so um, one we have one chain in red here and one chain in blue and they're complementary and um, the hydrogen bonding between their nitrogenous bases which stick out to the side uh, as you can see up here, so the nitrogenous base up here is sticking out to the side um, and the uh, um, hydrogen bonding between those bases between the two strands um, sort of glues the strands together and you get this um, double helix forming and that's where the double helix of DNA comes from um, so the hydrogen bonding is due to complementary base pairing so um, the nitrogenous bases, we'll have a look at them here there's um, there's five main bases, four of which appear in DNA. It, there's four in both DNA and RNA, and only one of them is different between DNA and RNA. But so we'll have a look at that. So we have two distinct types. We have what's called purines and what's called pyrimidines. So purines have these two heterocyclic rings. So these two big hex sort of hexagonal rings here and here. Um, heterocyclic just means it's a, a cyclic ring, it's in, in it's um, a closed loop, it's a circle, and hetero means that there's hetero atoms, so there's a nitrogen, nitrogen included. So these purines, sorry, have um, a composed of two heterocyclic rings, and they're attached to the sugar. Um, they're attached to the sugar here and here, sort of thing. Um, and then we have um, our pyrimidines on the other side. So the pyrimidines are um, just a single cyclic ring. Um, and um, they um, comp uh, have header atoms as well. Um, I try and remember purines versus pyrimidines. I think pyrimidines, the word itself, pyrimidine, is longer, so that's the shorter one. You can make up your own system, but that's how I remember it. Um, so, um, 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 four main ones are adenine, which is abbreviated A, guanine, abbreviated G, um, thymine, ab abbreviated T, and cytosine, abbreviated C. And um, during complementary base pairing, they pair um, adenine to thymine, so A to T, and guanine to cytosine, so G to C. So um, the base pairing is A, T, and G, C. Those are the, two, the, the pairings. RNA actually has uracil in the place of thymine. So uracil is very similar, just um, instead of this methyl group here, that methyl group's gone. So it's almost I identical. And it also pairs to adenine. So in um, RNA, you get adenine in uracil, so AU. And in um, RNA, you still get GC, the guanine pairing with cytosine. And those rules are called Chargaff's rules, and they're very important, and they were the rules that helped um, the guys who discovered DNA um, Watson and Crick, they helped them dis um, discover the structure of DNA, sorry. And um, so the rule is A pairs with T or U, depending whether you're in DNA or in RNA, and C pairs with G. Those are the basic rules. And they're Chargaff's rules. So our comparison of DNA and RNA, just to sum it all up, um, DNA um, is, has a two-carbon two deoxyribose, so the two-carbon in its ribose sugar has no oxygen um, bonded to it, it just has a hydrogen, um, whereas RNA has normal ribose where it has that oxygen atom in that um, hydroxide group. Um, DNA has thymine, whereas RNA has uracil, we looked at that. DNA is more stable, whereas RNA is less stable, that's because water can attack that um, that oxygen, that hydroxyl group in um, 
the on the two prime carbon of um of RNA if we have a look at a picture so um normally we'd have the hydroxyl group here it's sort of sticking out waters out here sort of thing and it's very easy for this water to come in here and attack this and that um can that can actually um attack this um phosphodiester bond up here and cleave that so it makes um RNA a lot less stable and DNA is generally double stranded um that's how it appears in the genome um and RNA is generally single stranded there are exceptions to both rules you can get single stranded DNA and double stranded RNA but in generalities and in animal cells you'll generally find double stranded DNA and single stranded RNA cool so that's it for nucleic acids we'll have a look at proteins in the next lecture